Hajistoros Fetais Volume 3, AK Fatal Records 3, whatever the fuck you want to call it, the trilogy, it is finished. Last day on the coffin, it is right here. The entire script, entire everything, we are finally finished with this series, which again, I've been sitting on my ass for about a week, or I've been shitting on my ass for a week, or I've been puking on my ass for a week. Again, um, if you're not aware of what happened, I got sick. Then after that, I got sick again. Um, then I actually had a drinking competition, which I pissed on everybody. I had 15 shots of liquor. I would drink everybody. It was about three hours. I had 15 shots of liquor. Um, you know, I was drinking vodka. Then I graduated and I upgraded into Bacardi Puerto Rican rum 151. Yes, 151 proof. That is 75.5% alcohol. I will drink everybody. Um, so again, like I said, pissed on a competition. Then I puked on a competition, you know, an hour or two later. Then I passed out covered in vomit, which I talked about. Um, nonetheless, I'm the drinking king. It's on my Discord. Don't challenge me. I have a fucking liver full of iron. It's just straight up, I can take this. I'm a young buck. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to sit here with me. Some dude was like 36 years old. I'll out drink you. Yeah, then have a fucking aneurysm, yo fuck. Get out of here. Go pass a fucking kidney stone. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, with that shit being said, um, you know, I was dumping asshole yesterday, so I couldn't actually get to this because I've been fucked up all week. Finally good. Drink about five cups of coffee. Muscled this shit out. Went through it like a trooper. Got the whole entire thing done. So we are here to go over the entire third one. Now, disclaimer. Uh, let's disclose this right off the bat. There is a lot. And when I say a lot, there is a shit ton of animal abuse inside this one. I mean... This mixtape has the most animal abuse I've ever seen in my life. This shit is like a fucking PETA advertisement or something. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's almost as bad as MD Pope 1. Now, again, uh, I had somebody who tried to tell me, oh, it's worse than MD Pope 1. MD Pope 1 has more clips, more disturbing clips. This one has like one scat clip. MD Pope 1 has like two to three that are fucking horrendous. You know what I'm saying? They're going for five, six, seven minutes. This one has one scat clip that's one and done in like 30 to 40 seconds. Uh, no vomit. MD Pope has three to four vomit clips. Uh, this one has, you know, animal cruelty and the fact that it's, you know, the same repetitiveness has gone the same repetitiveness while MD Pope has very unique gore, unique, um, animal cruelty. MD Pope is kind of like, you take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, you know, everything that's all fucked up and put into one big pot and boil it down to fucking disturbing. While this one is still a little bit repetitive, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it's still really bad. So when you see it at the bottom of the tier list, this has to be one of the only, um, decisions that I do in fact agree with where this one is really fucking bad okay um so again mostly gore a lot of animal cruelty uh a lot of violence there's some porn gore which again is like genital mutilation and other shit some dude puts his dick on a grill we're gonna get to that but with all that being said before we get into all the history and all that shit check out this big ass iceberg see that shit you're probably looking at it like, uh, yeah, something's different. Yeah, Hajistoros Fetais is crossed off because we are finished. But then that leaves a really fucked up situation. Because I did not do Ogre's Collection 3. I didn't do 4. I didn't do 5. And I did not do 6. Whew, that means we're going to have to do like 3 to 4 of these bastards in a row. Of course, I can't do MD Pope 3. I can't do Fubo. And I can't do Snuff R73, which is like 3 of them. Um, because again, if you don't know, I'm saving them shits for last. So we got like that sexual emotions of a donkey, uh, what the fuck, which to me, what I, from what I know, is just like a gay porn flick. I don't know why that's all the way down here. Um, you know, this is like beheading territory and fucking vomit and puke and all that shit and, and, and scat. I don't know why that's down here, but I'll try to mix it up as much as I can because again, from what I know, Ogre's Collection gets very, very dry and it gets worse and worse as you go on uh, volume by volume. So with that being said, uh, before we get into the history of this shit right here, Make sure you like and subscribe again. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for all the support, especially all the people inside my new Discord has been supporting the fuck out of me. Y'all been in my corner on some Rocky and Mickey shit. Y'all been pushing me. A um, lot of y'all was sitting by me like, oh, Cold Raven, you're sick. I hope you feel better. Sending me smooches, which I thought was pretty dope. Uh, <laughs> and uh, make sure you check my Patreon. Upload it twice to that. And there's a lot of shit I talk about on my Patreon that I won't talk about inside this YouTube video because it is very secretive. And if you're a patron, uh, please keep that inside of our little circle. Again, it's very secretive information I let y'all in on. So please keep it a secret. And I also uploaded, you know, the hidden clips or the lost clips. I hit you through this volume two. So with that last thing being said, check out my new Discord. Got a link of it inside the description. 
link in a pinned comment. So what happened was I got disabled on Discord. They banned me. They got rid of my Discord server. And within like two to three hours of that happening, I woke up, made a new one, dropped another 50 bucks, uh, got me six premium. Hold on. Check this shit out. Uh. Take that shit with yourself on eBay for $2.99. So again, I made a new one. And, you know, I start letting people come in a little bit by little uh, to keep, you know, crowd control. But there is a new one. Make sure you join it. Um, and instead of having gore and all that shit, um, you know, inside the server, I decided to make a separate server just in case that gets knocked down. Uh, we'll just make a new server. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, from what I know, the last thing I did uh, was I uploaded Foghorn, Leghorn, Hentai. Then, like, six hours later, everything got shut down. So, I'm just going to blame it on the Foghorn, Leghorn, Hentai. Which, if you don't know who that is, it's the big-ass rooster motherfucker from Looney Tunes. Uh, it was, like, a picture of him. Like, and there's, like, the Looney Tunes dog. He's, like, nothing on his head. And, like, the dog is giving him the fucking middle finger. It was the funniest shit. We were cackling when I put that in, like, the Cursed Images channel. Um, but, again, make sure you join. And uh, I'll probably do a watch party on this shit tomorrow because I'm very busy today. So, with all that information being given out, all that information being said, let's get into the history of this. Which is very fucking confusing. Because apparently there's reviews on this that date back to 2012. Which I kind of uh, talked about in my original Haji Sotos for Dice. What is it? But then at the same point in time, the versions that I'm watching have music that was, you know, released in 2017. So, how in the fuck can something be made in 2012... And then music, have music from 2017. And then there was a guy in my comments that was like, yeah, I helped make this. Uh, it was made in 2016. Yeah, y'all are fucking with my brain. This has to be the most confusing one out of all of them. So my honest opinion, if I were to give an educated guess, there's the original versions that were made in 2012. And then there are like, I guess, remastered editions or some shit. Or maybe someone took it and overlaid music. Or maybe they remade it and overlaid different music. Um, as a future reproduction of the same thing. So made in 2012, but then also made around 2017, 18, or 19. That has to be my wildest fucking guess. So we're going to stick with 18 and 19 because these are the versions that I happen to watch my damn self. Um, now, of course, I'm going to just stick with the main name, Lazaro Han. He's the maker of this garbage. You know, it's actually a pretty entertaining watch. This one is actually pretty entertaining. The rock music inside this one, I really fuck with heavy. Still no rap. I'm not expecting rap. Of course, this is gore and shit. Not expecting rap. But for the rock, it's still pretty much slaps. Now, this shit got 106 clips. Huge downgrade from my last mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? This shit was like 200, 300 clips. This was only 106 clips. Very, very bearable. You'll get through it. I promise you. Now, uh, these clips got some time on them because this shit is 1 hour 55 minutes and 56 seconds in total. That's nearly 2 hours of uh, gore, animal cruelty, and porn gore. So, you know, this has some length on it. Pause, you know what I'm saying? Um, but again, some of these clips are pretty bad and some of them are not so bad and some shit gets replayed once and again, but it's all cool. With that shit being said, let's pull out the motherfucking whiteboard. So here we are, this mixtape has 106 clips in total. Now out of those 106 clips, 40 of them are gore, which I always go into very, you know, graphic detail of what this is, even though you probably heard it 100 times already, just in case I get these new viewers, which I always do. So if you're a new viewer, make sure you hit that sub button and just know that I love you. Uh, <laughs> so gore, what I mean by it, mutilation, decapitation, you know, entrails coming out, a lot of blood, a lot of fucking guts. Really bad shit. Dismemberment. Got a lot of blood and guts. Then you got 31 animal clips. This is extraordinarily vague, right? And I keep it like that because if it has an animal, it goes in an animal. Animal can be an animal attacking an animal. Animals being killed in any which way or fashion. People knocking heels with animals. Animals knocking heels with animals. Not that humans aren't animals, but I mean like... Um, wild animals and other shit. This can be a huge array of things, which thank the motherfucking lord, there ain't no human-animal interactions in any inappropriate way. Not that, you know, some of these people beating the fucking piss out of them is appropriate, but we just know it's a little bit more appropriate than what we've seen in the MD Pope series. Then we got 17 violent clips. Woo! You don't know what violence is? It's people getting into fights. It's gore, but turned down by a huge notch. You know, maybe you were lit on fire. Maybe you got punched in the face and knocked the fuck out. Maybe you got hit by a car, but there's no blood, uh, or no insane amount of blood, no guts, no dismemberment, no decapitation. 
so it goes into violence. And you got 10 porn gore clips, which has been a staple of my mixtapes ever since I've seen the porn gore series, which means it's a very, very violent or very disgusting fucking porn. Um, porn gore in general, like someone cuts off their penis, mutilation of the genitals just to be extremely vague and get to the point. So then after that, you got four porn clips. Now, these porn clips are fucking terrible. Um, this is not your regular porn. This ain't no vanilla. And even in the kinky shit with the whips and the chains, no, this shit gets fucking bad. And when I mean bad, you're going to find out. Then you got one what the fuck clip. Got one cool clip. One scat clip. <sighs> you know, y'all already know how I feel about scat. Don't fucking like it. Um, you know, this is, to me is the most repulsing type of shit ever. But thank God it's only one. It's been a while since I've seen one, so we'll go ahead and we'll just march through it. Then he got one clip that was just downright fucking gross. Uh, with all that being said, those are all 106 clips divided into sections, and we are going to get on to the review. So I'm going to let you know right off the jump that we have six pages of shit to get through. But before I even go ahead and get through that, I'm letting y'all know if I sound a little bit fucked up during this review, it's because I'm very dehydrated from all the caffeine uh, that I've been drinking to keep myself up and wired to get through this shit. Uh, my tongue is whiter than a stock owner. I was drinking like two to three water bottles, but it ain't helping. Plus, on top of that, it's hotter than a fucking sauna in New York. It's about to hit like 85 plus right now. I'm already sweating balls. Haven't even got through the first clip. So, with all that shit being said, the sooner we start, the sooner we finish. So, let's go ahead and get this one out of here. Um, first clip, first page. Uh, you got a religious intro. Now, with this religious intro, it shows, you know, you go ahead, you know, picture, picture, picture. Dark, creepy fucking music. Probably scare, you know, some of y'all shitless. But for me, it's whatever, whatever. And then after that, it shows 27 photos of gore and porn gore. Um, you know, which is kind of a trend inside these movies that we start out with photos, you know, from the other ones with exploded heads. But this one actually has porn gore. It plays the Trooper by Iron Maiden. And they have eight pictures of Genki Genki. <sighs> which, if you don't know what Genki Genki is, good on you. But I'm about to let you in on this little secret. It's like these Japanese films. There's like 20 volumes of this shit. And... Anything that's slippery, slimy, and kind of worm-like of a creature, uh, they kind of fucking do things with them. Which, it did is so bad that it actually might be an entire Patreon exclusive series. That's how bad this shit is. I'm not sure if I can even talk about it on YouTube, because it is that fucking bad. And mind you, there's like 20 volumes plus of this shit. Now, it shows eight pictures now. You're like, what were in the pictures, Cold Raven? Uh, you know, people, is Japanese chicks with mouths full of worms looking like the boogeyman from WWE. That wasn't too bad. But then I had coochies full of worms and buttholes full of worms and all this other shit. And I'm sitting here like, what in the mother of fuck? Um, and then after that, it shows a chick who is the exact definition of a butterface. If you don't know what a butterface is, it's when a chick looks bad as fuck and you're like, wow, everything looks great, but her face. And uh, this chick has the exact face of The Miz from WWE, no doubt. But neck down, woo, she got it all working like it should be. I mean, wow, I take that call for a fucking spin around the block. Uh, that was before she decides to piss herself on purpose. Yes, she does this. I don't know. She goes into a female bathroom, comes right the fuck back out, stands there, <laughs> pisses herself. I don't know what the fuck that's up with. Um, I'm not sure about the fetishes that people got. Again... I don't understand 95% of the shit that I watch. Like, I understand it, but then I don't. Like, I know what the fuck I'm looking at, but then I don't understand the people who are like, oh, I can't, I gotta get more. I don't get that shit. But, um, yeah, she pisses herself, and then, um, she runs to the van that's recording it. So there's that. Uh, then after that, you get this dude whose head. I kid you not. 95% of this guy's head is fucking missing. It looks like there's just a baseball glove on a neck. You got people yelling Allahu Akbar and shit, and <laughs> they grab a fucking towel, and they wrap it around whatever's left of his, his, his head to apply pressure. You apply pressure when you get shot. You apply pressure when you get stabbed. When you got a flesh wound that's bleeding profusely, you apply pressure. But when 95% of somebody's fucking skull is missing and their brain is nowhere to be seen, applying pressure is not going to do shit because I'm not a doctor, but... um. You're fucking dead. Your, your brain is not even in your skull. Like, literally, it's just like his face. Everything else is not there. So what is what is applying pressure going to do? <laughs> it's, it's, what the fuck? He's just going to walk around with a flat fucking face. You know, no brain needed. It's just a lollipop walking around with a human body. I don't get it. Anyway, but that's, you know, where they're at. So, 
Not like they could even fucking read a book over there. Um, you got a faceless cow. About 95% of it's missing. Um, and by like faceless cow, I mean like its whole skull is gone. Except for what occupies the brain, I guess the dome. Uh, and it's standing upright. It ain't in shock. It's not having a seizure. It's actually standing upright. It's conscious. And I'm pretty sure that it's in a lot of motherfucking pain. I can only imagine. And, you know, there's people who are recording shit. And they have the exact entire fucking cow's skull, most of it. You know, unlike this, uh, I think it's like a stump or some shit. I can't remember right off the bat. But the fact is that this cow is upright with 95% of its skull missing. Now, I know I just, you know, kind of contradicted myself in the fact that I just said the other dude had 95% of his skull missing was dead. But that's because the only thing there was his face. His brain wasn't there. This cow's shit is missing, but his brain is still intact. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I can only imagine what the fuck is going on with that cow. From what I've heard about this clip before years back, um, apparently it got hit by a train. Uh, like it stuck his head <laughs> like somewhere in a train and hit it. I'm not sure how true that is. Uh, but just know this cow ain't exactly in pristine condition. After that, it shows a documentary of Africans getting worms pulled out of their body. Surprise, surprise. Um, then it shows animal beheadings, which this shit got me, right? They behead a goat and then they start, you know, moving the corpse around. So all the blood that's coming out of its neck is kind of creating an image, you know. They kind of do a circle and a circle and they draw like a dick or a giant one at that pause. Um, in a really shithole country, as you'd have to assume, because they're doing blood rituals with animals. I mean, this is not fucking 1 BC. This is, you know, 2021 or when this was made, probably still the 2010s. Um, and, and then it plays a song called, you know, Dead Seas, Lamb of God. But what really got me were the subtitles. There are subtitles to this shit. And I kid you the fuck not. I'm not yanking your fucking clit. I'm not yanking your nuts, paws. I'm not tugging on your titties. Legit, this is what fucking happens. They pull out a buffalo. They throw water on the buffalo, right? Huh, water buffalo? Nah. They throw water on the buffalo's head, and the buffalo shakes it off. And it shows subtitles on the screen that says... Since the buffalo shook its head, that is him giving consent to be sacrificed. In what fucking universe does that make sense? That's like me spitting a, a spitball at you, and because you jerked back or reacted, now I get to behead you. What is that? Because you poured water on its face and it shook it off of its head, that now gives itself consent to be sacrificed? I mean, imagine if that was an actual law. Where if you shake your head, period, you have to get fucking beheaded for a sacrifice and then have your corpse drag, drug around to draw a gigantic blood penis. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this. I mean, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. But again, look at the country and then come to your assumption. Uh, and then it's somehow, believe me, man, the fucking next clip is another one of these, you know, uh, blood rituals in some uh, country that is... I don't know how they did it, but even worse than the last country, worse condition-wise. I mean, it looks like they went from some clay hut bullshit to looks like, you know, they're living inside of a dirty-ass air conditioner. I mean, everything's all swampy, fucking wet, made out of tin. It's just terrible. Condition gets even more awful. So the fact this was recorded blows my fucking mind. Um, after this, it shows, uh, it plays The Judas Kiss by Metallic Metallica? M Metal now I'm fucking with you, Metallica. I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. Um, I know. Oh, I know Metallica. I know somebody probably paused and is already writing up an angry little fucking comment. Um, but shows the guy with an exploded heel. I mean, his heel looks like someone put like, you know a firecracker in it and blew it up. It is you know just gore. It's a gore like you could barely recognize that it's a heel. And to the point where I would call an ambulance. I would put something around it to wrap it up. You know, apply pressure. This guy is like recording himself showing off this gigantic fucking wound and gash like he's modeling, a, you know, a high heel. What? Uh. Take that shit with you, selling on eBay for $4.99. Why the fuck that is? I don't know. People are weird. So, um, after that shit, uh, God, it shows a guy who's in a race. It's like a Bulgarian guy, and he trips up, and he bends his knee like a folding chair. And they put ice on it, they drag him out of there, he's good. Uh, now, this one is something I want to get a little bit of a rant here. Y'all know I always get these rants out the blue. It shows a chubby kid with his shirt on, jump into a, a pond. And apparently this pond is so shallow that when he lands in it, uh, you know, it's about, what, two to three feet deep? So he breaks his fucking ankle, which is pretty funny, whatever, he breaks his leg. Um, 
But this is an ideology I never understood. You would think that hiding in plain sight would make more sense than sticking out like a sore thumb. Like, you got these fat motherfuckers, you know. All offense. Um, <laughs> who go to these beaches and these pool parties and wear t-shirts. You're wearing a t-shirt because you're afraid to show what you look like because you think you would stick out like a sore thumb. But in turn, you being the only person wearing a t-shirt makes you stick out like a fucking sore thumb so you defeat your own fucking ideology. You see how backward ass that logic is? I don't want to stick out. So I'm going to stick out. Like, dog, if you're uncomfortable with your body, don't go to a place where you have to be comfortable with your body. You you understand what I'm saying? Like, at a beach, you have to be comfortable with your body. That's the whole point. You got to, you know, I'm not saying you have to go there without a shirt. But I'm just going to fucking say if you do, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. And, of course, you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb because you don't want to reveal what you actually look like under that shirt. But that's, in turn, what you're doing. So you're defeating the fucking logic. Just letting you in on that. Yeah. Um, so, with that shit being said, um, not that it's cool to see these, uh, you know, 45-year-old dads who don't give a fuck with these gigantic guts and their tits slapping over them with their hairy nipples. Not exactly the greatest sight to see, but at least they're not wearing fucking t-shirts and taking laps or taking laps, you know, with this soaked-ass fucking weighted vest that it turns into after soaking up half the ocean because of the size of your t-shirt. Uh, uh, it shows, um, a guy who then puts his penis on a grill. Yeah, he puts his cock on a fucking grill, or his peewee on a grill. Again, it's not like this guy's packing anything, which I come down to it, like I've said this a hundred times before, people who typically mutilate their genitals in these mixtapes aren't packing nothing in the fucking first place. I'm not sure if they hate their genitals, so they kind of, you know, take it out on themselves. But he literally puts his dick on a grill, grabs one of those, you know, grill forks that, you know, you see cartoons they stab sausages with, uh, and he starts putting it in his pee hole, pressing down on his grill, and you see the coal smoke, it's pretty fucking hot. Um, and the fact that he continues to do this is ridiculous. I mean, I have a fat dick. Don't get me wrong. Of course, I'm Puerto Rican. You'd have to assume so. But even if I had a small peewee, I would at no point mutilate my fucking genitals. You know what I would do? I would marry a midget or some shit just to compensate. Or I'd put on even more muscle than I already have to compensate. I would never at any point put my dick in a blender, put it on a grill, cut it in half, or even get a, a was it, a Prince Albert or some shit. Why? I don't get it. Again, this is coming from a sane. I'm, well, I'm not that sane. But I'm sane enough to know not to mutilate my dick and balls. Um, after that, it shows the Showtime kick. You know, Anthony Pettis, when he kicked the fucking thunder out of Benson Henderson. Uh, yeah, it shows that. So this is like the only one cool moment throughout the entire mixtape. Uh, huge MMA fan, so I knew that right off the bat. I was like, oh, it's a Showtime kick. Page one. We are done with that one. So we are on to page two. Which it has a dude who's bench pressing. It's not a big ass dude, but it's not a small dude. He's like moderate size. Pause. And yo, he has like four plates on that shit. It is a lot to bench. He pops it up. Good pop up. And when it comes down, he couldn't uh, actually push it up. So then the whole entire rack, uh, the whole entire barbell slips out of his palms and just crunches his fucking chest. I mean, like, boom. Like, you see his chest go from this to bend like that. And it comes back up as the barbell, you know, bounces off his chest. And this dude is so fucked up. It just makes me laugh because he's just sitting there over the bench. People are, like, patting him on his back, giving him water. Like, dude, you just got your ass whooped by a barbell. Uh, but again, man, uh, stop with the ego lifting. You know who you are. If you're ego lifting, you're literally looking for danger. So we are 13 minutes in. Um... Then it shows a biker crash. They call it like fatal bike accident. So it's not fatal. Uh, but anyway, a biker crashes. He flies in the air. He looks like a cat falling from a tree where they, you know, extend their limbs out. He goes flying, twirling, smashes into the ground. It doesn't show anything else. It just shows some chick holding a camera. Like, um, how do I say it? It's like the whole camera is gray because she keeps pointing it and moving it very fast. So you really don't see anything else. And she just keeps fucking screaming like it's a scary pop-up. And it just gets very annoying very fast. And this goes on for a couple of minutes. Uh, then it shows Joe Camel's execution. Gets his neck slit. Done. Then it's a four-minute necklacing. If you don't know what necklacing is, it's something that's very popular in Africa. And what it is is when they put lighter fluid on you, they put tires over you, and they burn your ass alive. I've explained this a couple times before. And this shit is torture, torture. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, the tires melting on you. You're on fire. Ain't no really way to escape. But this was like one of the most failed necklacings I've ever seen. 
I mean, they just start beating the shit out of this guy. This thing was like WWE Extreme Rules, but in Africa. Somebody has a tire and bonks him in the fucking head with it. Somebody hits him in the head with a gas can and he wears that shit like a fucking Team Fortress 2 hat. He's like, <laughs> you know, and that is just beating the shit out of him with any object they can find. They grab a table and they smash the fuck out of him with it. And this is not just a table. This is like a table that was built like by like a, a white man. You know what I'm saying? You know those tables that last generations? One of them fucking tables. Like a really sturdy table. They beat the shit out of him with it to the point where it breaks. They, they fuck this guy up. I kid you not. And then they light him on fire. And then he dies. And then they start like um <laughs> like feeding the fire. They start throwing wood at the fire and like boxes and shit to feed the fire. Which is terrible. Um, but anyway, he's dead. So what do you want me to fucking do about it? Then they have, uh, it plays a song called We Are All We Have by The Casualties. Uh, and it shows, you know, some guy grab a goat's head, they bends it backwards, slices his neck, and cuts his head off. Uh, apparently it was another sacrifice thing. It shows a guy whose head slashed right here, so it looks like a fucking cold cut ham that's halfway sliced. And they keep, you know, playing with it like a PlayStation 2 manual. Uh, it shows a car wreck. Now, the guy who was driving the car gets out the car. I'm assuming he was driving because he was covered in a lot of blood. And he's trying to open up the passenger door. Which, I hate to say it, I'm no doctor, but that pa whoever's in the passenger door is fucking dead. I mean, she looks like one of those stress things with the eyes pop out, you know, you squeeze it. Because literally her head looks like a stop sign because of the flatness, and her eyes all bulge out her skull looking in different directions. She's fucking dead. And yet this guy's like thumping on her like, I need to get her out and save her. Dude, there ain't no saving her though. She is fucking gone. Um, and it's because of your reckless driving. That's just what it is. And there was a person behind her who was just done too. Everybody in the car is dead except him. Which to me is like, it's fucked up, man. To me, now that I think about it, it's very, uh, very terrible. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that, you know, because of your reckless decision... Uh, I guess he was speeding or some shit. Ain't no way a car flips a thousand times for no fucking reason if you're driving normally. But the fact that the man behind the wheel survives, but all the people who weren't behind the wheel or couldn't control their own fates are gone. But he's the one that has to live with the guilt, not me. So, um, But I have to live with watching that shit. But you didn't fuck me up. You know what I'm saying? None of this shit fucks me up. Nothing really gets to me uh, at this point. You know what I'm saying? Maybe when I was like 16 or 17, this shit might have gotten to me a little bit, but nowadays I'm just so desensitized to most of this. Unless it's scat, then that shit can fuck me for about a day or two. Um, but anyway, it shows a guy who has so many maggots in his leg, that shit is purple. His leg is actually purple. Like, like really fucking purple. And they like play with it. Like it's like, like a doctor's office. They scrape out a little bit. Then like, eh, just put gauze on it. And there's a bunch of maggots in it. They just put gauze on it. So there's that. Um, Shows a guy who's bloated as fuck. I mean, he looks like a boomer from Left 4 Dead. And he is on a crucifix that's about 30 feet high in the sky. How the fuck did they get him up there? I don't know. I, I have no clue. How did you get crucified 30 feet up in the sky? That tells me that at some point, you had to gotten beaten down to a pulp unconscious. Um, mind you, crucifixes are fucking heavy nailed to a crucifix or a cross and then like, you get like a 40 foot ladder then get people strong enough to lift your ass that high and then like somehow rope tie you to I, I don't know how they did it but they fucking did it you know what I'm saying and it is pretty impressive but that's just what it is um shows a tiger attack a boar eats it alive uh and then it shows a failed suicide which I thought this was pretty funny because of course you know um in, in American in America I say American countries in America if you're trying to commit suicide they'll send in like a little squad to try to prevent it you know you're about to jump off of something you see the squad uh you know rappelling downward then they'll kick you back inside your house or your hotel that you're trying to jump off of they'll try to prevent it but in Spanish countries they don't do that shit when South America in general uh they'll just be like oh look at this motherfucker he about to die <laughs> now don't make sure to record this shit with the best cameras that they got available uh so this dude jumps off like one of these towers and instead of smacking into the ground which would have killed him he smashed into one of these big ass electric boxes that are like eight feet tall so he smacks into it then he falls to the ground so he's probably alive but he is really fucked up but it's a failed suicide nonetheless um then you got this ugh, man this is a dumbass mom i mean this is one of the dumbest fucking mothers on earth so she runs across the street and her daughter is like 20 feet behind her. And by daughter, I mean a daughter, daughter, not daughter by blood, but as in like daughter in size. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, 
Uh, yeah, it's like a fucking three to four year old. Still a toddler. So she runs across the street and her toddler is trying to catch up. And when the toddler goes into the street, a car smashes her. And she goes flying a couple feet. Uh, and then she's like crawling on the ground trying to crawl to safety and then the mother runs back and she's like oh my god my daughter like first off that's a toddler why, why don't you holding a hand or holding her up in general why the fuck are you jaywalking or jay running I guess and now you're gonna act like you give a fuck that's bullshit you know what I'm saying uh, and, and my favorite part is when she's coddling her own daughter the guy who literally ran over the little girl comes out the car and he is pissed. Like, Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what the fuck? What, what the fuck? Like, he's pissed that he hit a little girl. Like, he's mad at the little girl for jumping in front of his car. Uh, uh, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't understand it myself, but it plays 502 by Mega Death. Um, speaking of Mega Death, Mega Death, a couple of people were actually discussing it inside my server um, yesterday. Whew. Then it shows a couple run across the street. Both of them get hit. Both of them fly. So there's that. Uh, shows a guy who cuts off his own finger, his own thumb, with a tomahawk chop. Which, that shit reminds me of... Uh, you ever heard that Wendy's Chili story where the chick uh, went to Wendy's. She found a thumb in her Wendy's Chili. And then she tried to sue Wendy's. But then it turned out she had this long rap sheet of being a con artist. And it turns out she bought a thumb from somebody. Who the fuck is a thumb salesman? Where'd you get it? I, I I don't know. But at the end of the day, I'm assuming that may be the thumb that she had bought. Because who willingly just cuts off their thumb? Uh, you know, this has to be an elaborate plan where, okay, I'll lose my thumb for a couple million dollars. Which I would never lose my thumb. But the fact that she even placed the thumb inside a chili, then ate it, chewed it, then spit it out into... Huh? Ah! Why? Come on, man. What's wrong with you? Jesus Christ. Um, then you got this one female, man. <laughs> Check this shit out. She got a fucking wagon. I mean, she got a fat ass. I mean, whew, she got ass from Sunday to Saturday. Uh, and then she decides to stick an entire chair up her pussy. Why she does it, I don't fucking know why. So she has one of these old ass, you know those grandma chairs that you see at your uh, grandmother's house or whatever. And the bottom of it is like a ball. You know, it's not the straight legged ones, it's a fat ass ball, so it looks like a doorknob for the bottom. And the bottom of the chair is dirty as fuck. Dog hair, cat hair, dirt, grime, mud. And she's shoving the entire, you know, that, that ball part in her pussy. And she does, she's fucking the chair uh, from behind, throwing it back on this chair. And when it falls out, she puts it back in there. And she does it several times. Ugh. Ugh. That's just fucking crazy. It's all dirt and grime and hit. Ugh. Like, it's not gag worthy, but it's just cringe. Ugh. You're all in your pussy. What is wrong? What is wrong with you? Like, come on, man. Duh. Like, she had a fat ass, so if you wanted it, you can get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there'll be anybody would give it. But shit, you prefer to do that? I don't I don't understand. Reminds me of that one guy who was in really, really good shape, but he preferred to fuck himself in the butt. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you can there'd be people willing to do whatever you want because you look so good. Paul's not like that. Um, but the fact that you do this weird ass shit just baffles me, you know? Um, now I'm gonna finish up these last two clips because I'm running short on time, so I'm gonna have to, you know, cut right here. Uh, but you got a matador, right? Which is the Olay motherfuckers with the bulls. And he's like, Olay with the red flag, Olay. And then the bull stops at the third one. And he just stops. And he looks at him. And then the matador just makes eye contact with him, like, oh shit, he ain't falling for it no more. And just starts tossing him up in the air like a fucking pizza. Starts whooping his ass. Um, and then you got another matador one, which this one blows my mind. This shit right here is nuts. I kid you not. So, you got a matador who's, you know, doing the Olay shit with a bull. Now, I tell you right now, again, my mind is blown. He literally calls out the bull to a fight. There's a difference between being tough and just being downright fucking stupid. If you're, you know, two guys calling you out at a ball, you punch one in the face and you start fighting with both, that's pretty tough, you know what I'm saying? If you fight, like, you know... A trained mixed martial artist to defend your girl's honor or something because he did some shit. That's tough. But when you call out a two-ton death machine, and I'm not referencing your mother, that is just downright fucking stupid. It dumb. So him and the bull literally have a standoff. They are staring at each other, standing still, 
and he's like this come on what's up come on come like he is calling on this bull and I'm sitting, it feels like eternity, you know, it's like 20 seconds of him calling this bull out, and it feels like eternity, because it's like, dude, you, you're not even playing, so like I was saying, he just kept begging for it, and what do you know, he begged for it, and then the bull went after him, and whooped his ass, I mean, this bull sticks his horn in him, starts throwing him, and then he sticks his horn, like, under his belt lining, you know, from the back, because he's, you know, on his stomach, and it pulls up and gives this guy a super mega wedgie of fucking death. I mean, this guy was probably shitting blood for a week after the fact. And he gets carried out away, bleeding out his stomach, bleeding out his ass. I mean, this guy is just absolutely destroyed, which what happens when you call out a bull. It's a bull. And I'm just going to say it before someone even does it. Uh, someone be in the comments, oh, you mess with a bull, you get the horns. Oh, very creative and very original. Asshole. Um, after that... It shows a sucker punch, right? This dude sucker punches this other guy so hard. I mean, he gets put in the pillow biter position. Which, if you don't know what the pillow biter position is, it means you're face down, your ass up. I mean, he looks like a raccoon from Dragon Ball Z after Goku elbowed him in the stomach. And then somebody comes up with a cardboard box and starts beating him in the head with it, I guess, to add injury to injury. I mean, it's a cardboard box, so not much you can really do with it. I mean, it's about as you know harmful as a spoon in a gunfight. Not really doing much, but he did get hit in the head with a cardboard box a couple times. Uh, then it shows a guy who falls into some train tracks. Now, I don't mean train tracks, train tracks. I mean like a subway. You know, you got the platform like this, and it comes down. Your train comes this way. And this guy literally falls down, or well, he jumps down willingly because he's committing suicide. And the train doesn't run him over. He gets stuck between a platform and a train going this way. So it kind of grinds him, so he's spinning like a Beyblade. And by the end of it, he looks like a fucking Twizzler. It's just ridiculous, and the dude's dead. And what sucks is before he he was trying to jump down to commit suicide, so one guy grabs him by his arm to try to prevent them from doing it. But you know, you, all your efforts is done. Police come by, they put up this big you know sheet to cover up the mess in the scene. Uh, about five to six minutes later, after everybody's already seen it and witnessed how he got like that, so you're not really hiding nothing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's already seen it, taken the pictures and recorded it. It plays uh, all that remains, uh, six. Here we go, the, the one scat clip. This is the one I was dreading. Okay, I think I'm ready for this. So it shows a chick who's wearing a chef's hat. I don't know why. And she has this pussy, like literally a chick is has her pussy like nailed to her forehead the way she's squatting on her. Has her ass puckered at an angle and she takes this two foot log and mind you, this is one of the longest and thickest shits I've ever seen. This, like, is a world record shit. It looks like my forearm times two. And this whole entire thing comes out perfectly, goes in her mouth. It breaks off, and then she has this one shit ball in her mouth. And she's... And this other chick is, like, forcing it and making sure that it's in there good. And then she... And then she... And then she... <laughs> and then she wipes shit on her face like some Indian tribal type of beat. I don't know what else, man. It's pretty bad. It's not the worst scat clip I've seen. I'm surprised I got through that without gagging. A couple pauses. Uh, but I'm good. On to the next one. It shows a donkey getting pulled by a truck. It's trying to run with it or whatever. Uh, but it gets pulled by a truck. Plays Wolves of Chernobyl. Um, then you got like two gore corpses uh, that we played over and over and over and over. Uh, it does that about three to four times where it keeps on playing and switching between the two. Um, then it shows this white chick that has her arms out. She's goading this black dude into a fight. He's walking away from the situation. She keeps on goading him into it. Uh, and then when he turns around, she like puts her hands out her side. You know, she was like this, like, oh, come and get it, come and get it. And he's walking away. And then when he turns around, she puts her hands out her side and starts walking back. And he walks up to her face and was like, blah, blah, blah. And then she puts her arms out again. And he punches her in the jaw. And knocks her out. Like, I mean, she slumps so bad. I mean, like, her head almost touches her ass cheeks. Which, um, I agree with it. And then I disagree with it. I mean, she didn't put her hands on him. But at the same point in time, she was asking for it. She literally was asking for it. You know what I'm saying? She literally asked for it. Like, like I don't mean, like, she asked for it as, like, a, a saying. Like, she literally, like, was, like, punch me in my face. And, well, he did it, you know? Um, which, again, I feel like there's two different arguments to be made on those people. Never put your hand on women, which uh, I don't say never. I mean, if a chick has a gun, uh, has a knife, and she's trying to hurt you, blah, 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 this, that, and the 30, and let a chick smack you and punch you in your face and make you look like a bitch in public, I'm not saying to grab her and tombstone pile driver, but if you get uppercutted after slapping me in my face, I'm just saying you kind of ask for this shit. Uh, but she didn't touch him. 
but she was looking for it. So she found what she was looking for. That's my point. Now we on to page four out of six. Uh, shows the guy some maggots in his gums, and that's about it. Um, one of the gross clips. Actually, this is the gross clip. A whole bunch of maggots in his gums. There's this one clip that is very similar to this, but it's so much more far the worse that I actually had to put it into gore. Yeah, believe that. Uh, now here comes a whole bunch of animal abuse. Sound like Johnny Bravo when I said it. Um, and they start beating these raccoons, dog. Like, they are carpets. They start fucking clubbing them, smacking them against the ground by holding them by the heels, beating them like old carpets. Uh, then they start skinning these raccoons alive, which, funny enough, I saw this video when I was, like, in, um, third or fourth grade. My teacher showed me it, because it was, like, one of those, uh, teaching us about animal cruelty. And, yes, we saw the uncensored version with all the blood and all that. Uh, uh. Take that one. Take all of them. Whole family gifts. Don't sell them. These are gifts. Um, but yeah, the raccoon was covered in blood. Then they start, you know, uh, beating the dogs too. Dogs are locked up in cages. Uh, it shows the guy standing on the dog's head with like both feet on its head, standing upright, uh, like it's a stool. Now again, it's not. It's crushing the dog's head, but it's actually not splatting it flat, which is uh crazy. It's a testament of the strength of the dog's skull. Um, you know, and they start skinning dogs alive, and then it shows hundreds of these animals locked up in cages that are, you know, getting prepared to get skinned next. It's despicable as fuck. Um, now, I'm gonna tell you right now, man. There are hundreds of fighting styles to learn on this planet, from things like, you know, boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, to, you know, martial arts or belt systems, like you may be a black belt in Taekwondo, maybe a black belt in Jiu-Jitsu, but imagine being a black belt in the homo palm. You may not know what the fucking homo palm is, but I'm here to teach you what it is. Not that I know it myself, but it's just how gay people fight. Gay people don't trade hands. They trade these palms. just like they tuck them in and... And this one dude takes off his uh, his like sweater. He has a red shirt. And he starts charging at this other dude doing the homo palm shit. And he knocks him the fuck out. He knocks his ass out. And his boy jumps in, and then another dude who's a master of the homo palm also fucks him up. Which, if you lose in a fight by the homo palm, that's grounds to just kill yourself. I'm just gonna keep it the fuck real with you. If you lose to the homo palm, jump off a building and, and spike your head first into the cement. That's it. There ain't no coming back from that. I don't care what you do. You can come back and stab the dude. You can come back and knock him out a hundred times in a row. That loss is still on your resume. You can be a hundred wins and you know just that one loss against the home opponent, still a gun, still on your resume. There's no scrubbing that clean. That's like you know a scar across your stomach after having appendicitis or some shit. You just can't get rid of it. It's done. The damage is done. Just do what you have to do to scrub yourself clean. In the fact that just spike your head into the ground after a 100 foot drop. Never lose to the home opponent. Um. Shows a bull knock over a horse, and the guy's on the horse riding it. Uh, shows a couple of corpses. Shows more cameras getting his throat sliced open. And then shows this one dude who is tied to a pole. Very, very tight. I mean, he is tied to this pole tight. Like, no breathing room tight. Like, you couldn't even slide a sheet of paper between this guy and a pole. And they start beating him with logs, like these big-ass branches. And they beat him so much with these branches that it actually becomes loose. And he actually starts getting out. That's how hard they are beating the fuck out of him that they're loosening up these knots that they had. I mean, this guy gets, you know, beaten to a pulp uh, by these branches. And by the end of it, he does get out. But, I mean, the damage is done. He got the shit beaten out of him. Um... Now, it plays a song called Walk by uh, Panter but Pantera. I was about to say Pantera because, of course, my writing, again, hopped up on all this caffeine. I do remember this song because it was a Madden 2010, which I actually really like this song. Uh, but it shows... This is crazy, right? It shows a chick walking in the street. Now, she walks into a train. or well, not a train, necessarily. It's kind of a trolley, I guess what you call it, because you got traffic on the left and the right of it. It's not train tracks exactly themselves. It's kind of like a trolley. And she literally is oblivious, and she walks right into the shit, and she gets ran over by the trolley. Now, my point is, how the fuck do you not see a trolley coming? I mean, seeing a trolley coming is the most easiest thing to see. It's like a fat bitch in an elevator, dog. It's hard to miss. You know, you, you kind of see it. Not like you're, you're staring at it, but it's a fucking trolley. This shit is literally just like a train, but in traffic. 
and she got hit by it. Like, I remember she was like, <gasps> like you were caught by a surprise by a 55,000 pound, you know, train coming at you at like, you know, it wasn't even coming at her like it was like 50 miles. That shit was going 15 miles per hour. And she still got hit by the shit. And it, it was mind blown. Uh, shows a guy shoot a rocket launcher and the shit explodes. Uh, now it shows this one dude whose balls are so fat paws that it looks like a whoopee cushion with veins. Uh, it's fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? If I do say so myself. He looks like he's in a lot of fucking pain. The guy does not look like he's vibing whatsoever. And mind you, this shit is like this long from point A to point B and it's laid down flat and you can see the veins like someone's holding a flashlight under it it is in really bad shape I don't know what he's got to do to get it fixed but get it fixed um which by the looks of the situation in the bedroom they ain't gonna get it fixed um it's gonna live with it then it shows a dead kid whose brain's leaking uh now here's remember when I talked about that maggot in the gums this was the worst version because I see this dude laying back and he's like all fucked up uh, you know you can see his chin bone because like all this is missing and you see all this black stuff like this right I'm like oh man I guess he got shot in the face and you know all this meat right here was missing and oh man his beard you no know, not wasn't a beard those were all maggots yeah they were all like black maggots those were I I I, I, I it blew me away those were all maggots on his face that it literally looked like a beard. Like, I'm talking about like a thick beard, not like a, you know, a bullshit beard like this. I'm talking about like a Kimbo slice beard. I keep my shit short because the shit don't want to grow out like that. But my whole point is, it looked like a Kimbo slice, like a James Harden beard of maggots that were eating at his face to the point where all of this was clear white bone and gums. They were going to Chow Town, and holy shit, it was like piranhas or something on his face, man. And you can literally see them moving because they start zooming in and no one's doing nothing. Uh, I don't know if he wants to die by this or what it is, is a wish to give back to the earth, but he's alive while this is going on, let me tell you that much. It's not like it's a corpse. No, he's alive. Um, then it shows a pit bull attack a pug, which I do call that a massive W because I love pit bulls and I hate pugs. I severely hate pugs. I remember my ex, man, she had a pug. And she had all these pug statues. Like, her parents used to be pug breeders as, like, a side project thing. And they had all this pug shit. They had, like, seven or eight pugs of their own while selling pugs. And pug, 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 pug. Oh, look at Thule in her. Oh, don't you just love pugs? No, I don't like pugs. They're ugly. They're short. Their face is smushed. I would literally elbow drop a pug and not feel bad about it. So the fact that a cool ass pit bull was fucking up a pug is a big W in my book. And it plays the animal by Disturbed. Uh, then it shows a guy whose kneecap is exploded to the max. I mean like his other, his, rest of his body, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? But his kneecap is just exploded and mangled to the point where it's just no return. And I started laughing, remind me of like this was the origin story, the bronze kneecap from Fairy Odd Parents or some shit. Just got caught up in Brazil and got his whole entire kneecap blown up. So after that, that is page four. We on to page cinco. Shows two females fighting. Nothing crazy. Uh, shows, uh, I don't know what this was. Uh, but like she had like hooks in her pussy that was spreading it open. And you can see her pussy breathing open and closing. Open and closing. Now, I'm not no fucking gynecologist. So I don't know what's going on or what they're doing. But just know that's what was all going on. Then it plays um, Not Falling by Mudvayne. Uh, shows two hyenas fighting the wildebeest. Now, when this goes on, one of the hyenas gets a good bite on this wildebeest, opens up his stomach, so the entrails are falling out. Now, the other hyena that did that, I believe, actually ran away. I'm trying not to continue to burp because I already did that shit like four or five times this video. So, excuse me, at this point, I want to keep on doing that. You know, so I kind of played off as a joke, but now it's going to get a little bit redundant. Uh, but again, they open up the wildebeest's stomach, so his entrails are coming out. Now, it starts, you know, trying to stand its ground and it just falls over and it's like, dog, you're done. Uh, then the hyena starts eating out its entrails and like hundreds of vultures just start coming out and start picking at it and just finish it off. And the hyena is like snapping at the vultures, but they just finish up the carcass. <laughs> now, it plays Burn by Papa Roach, a band that I have not talked about yet, I believe, which is just crazy. You know, Papa Roach is such a throwback for me. Uh, but it shows this chick grab a dildo. I mean, this shit is fucking fat. I mean, the doodle's like this. And it's like a Moby Huge damn near. And she shoves the whole thing in her ass. Whole thing. Okay. Now, if you think that's fucking bad, the same exact chick in the next clip 
grabs a dildo that's about as long as my fucking leg, sticks the thing so far in her anus that you she's pushing it and you see her ab abs expanding because the dildo was literally pushing out her stomach and belly button. I'm not making this up, okay? I am not fucking with you. I I've never seen nothing like it. Like, I, wow, okay, just wow. Not wow in a good way, but wow and what the fuck is wrong with her? Okay, after that, it shows the craziest fight that I've ever seen. I mean, this fight is like something out of a fever dream. Now, what I'm about to describe to you may be the most craziest, nonsensical shit you've ever heard in your entire life. So be prepared to get blown out your seat. This is crazy. Remember that beach fight with the porn star mustache guy? I believe that was an ogre's collection. And, you know, he's getting his ass whooped and makes this miraculous comeback and chokes out the dude, then resuscitates him mouth to mouth and gives him water. This is way crazier than that. So, they're on a highway, right? And the car is parked on a highway. On a fucking, uh, a freeway or whatever. Uh, whatever you want to call it. And there's a 50-year-old man who is almost completely bald. He is in his tidy whiteies, not even boxes. I'm talking about, like, you know, those childish underwears that you used to wear when you were like four to five years old. He's in his tidy whiteies, no pants, no shorts, no shoes, no socks, standing on a fucking highway, calling out some young dude to a fight. Now, while this is going on, the young dude doesn't sucker punch him. He sucker kicks him, okay? He goes for a high kick to the face, slips, Loses his balance, busts his ass, and the old man just starts wailing on him like Chael Sonnen. I mean, he just starts wailing on him. I mean, he hits him with like 40 hard punches at a good speed. For an old man, he is punching like he's in his 30s. You know what I'm saying? And his wife tries to break it up, but he is punching this guy so hard that his wife like stumbles and falls backward, right? And falls on her ass. Now, the, <laughs> the way that this guy gets up, who's in his 20s, <laughs> you know back in Britain with that Queen Elizabeth type of hand palm goodbye? Imagine him doing this palm and then completely gripping the man's asshole. I mean, like, it's literally, you see it, it's between his cheeks. He's got the grip on his chocolate starfish and he is digging it right up his shit crack and getting in there good or he's itching it for him. You know what I'm saying? And he's sticking it up his fucking butt and using that as momentum to get up. That... I give up, okay? I just give up. This, I've seen hundreds of fights in my life. I've seen fights personally, you know, straight up. I've been in a lot, but I've never seen some crazy fever dream shit like this. And it's a fever nightmare, if anything. So, with that being said, that was like, he gives him like the anal palm panther attack. Um, and it shows a kid grab a rabbit out of a bag. I'm like, oh, that's a cool magic trick. Then he breaks its fucking neck. I'm like, no! You know, just absolutely murders it, throws it on the ground, walks away, and that's it. Pretty cool magic trick for most people, though. You know, it's a little bit impressive. Uh, God. Which, um, he's trying to show off, you know, his, his strength. But the guy looked like he was like 14 or 15, which is pretty crazy because uh, animal abuse that young. Typically, he's going to turn out to be a serial killer. So, we'll see what happens in the next 10 or 15 years if we hear about that guy. Uh, and that video surfaces on some Luca Magnata shit where they start showing his earlier videos that he uploaded to the internet. Um, shows a guy cut in half from a train. Uh, shows a dude whose arm is so just mutilated. It looks like a meat flipper, like a duck's flipper for an arm, but just meat. Uh, shows a guy who, uh, shows a kid who's kind of drowned in the water. And they pull him out. And instead of giving him CPR, they just start taking pictures. So there's that. Um, shows a guy who gets uh, knocked out, right? He's on a bike and he just starts turning to the left. And then like a, a truck hits him, knocks him out, and he falls over and falls to the side. I don't know why he was slowly drifting to the left. I guess he fell asleep on his bike or something, but he got woke the fuck up rudely. Um, shows corpses in the street or what would be corpses because this guy's like whole entire half right here. Completely missing. Shows 30 cops. 30 cops, yes, beat the absolute dog piss out of this one dude. He has like a giant dildo or something and one cop jumps and like spear tackles him and he falls down on the ground and they start beating the shit out of him. Um, plays School Days by ACDC. Shows a street magician 
who gets jumped by three people. They start beating him. They grab like a drum. They hit him in the head with a drum. Then they grab a skateboard and start laying into him. I mean, they're just beating the absolute piss out of this one dude. Uh, then it shows this one dude rip out his entire toenail. Grabs the ship. Rips it out completely. No fucks given. It's really cringe to watch, but that's what he does. Last page. Final stretch right here. Um... So this one dude, man, his whole entire ass is missing. Like he was attacked by the fucking Alaskan bull worm. I mean, the shit is crazy. His whole entire cheeks gone and missing. I'm not fucking with you. They are completely gone. And that's just about it. Nothing else to it. Uh, shows a pig eating a pit bull. Uh, it's a dead pit bull and a pig is just munching at it. And, you know, it's pretty crazy to see that because it kind of shows that the roles have been reversed. After this, it shows um, this one dude who swings, cuts the guy's head off. It's like a, what do you call it again? A public beheading in Saudi Arabia, apparently. Swings it once, completely cuts his head off clean with one swing. Boom, done. Quick death. Um, shows a couple who are driving on a bike. And this guy is parked like this. And he's waiting for them to come in front of him. And the second they come in front of him, he hits the gas and hits them. And then they go flying. So I thought it was pretty funny. Um, shows five minutes of tumbling doll of flesh. It plays... Caliban's Revenge song Caliban and if you don't know what Tumbling Doll of Flesh is it's like this Japanese movie or some shit uh, where like I guess this girl's abducted and they tie you down to a bed and they completely just keep raping her and they start beating the shit out of her uh, dismembering her pull out her tongue and start cutting it with like a razor blade like you know something you shave your legs with and um dismember her if I didn't already say that mutilate her there we go it's another one and they just keep on completely Fucking her and goring her. And apparently that's the entire movie. That's all it really is. Now, it's not real, of course. It's just acting. Um, but the fact is, it's a pretty fucked up movie. I mean, who would sit there and enjoy that shit? But sadly, this sucking fucking bastard. Sucking fucking, yeah, suck on clits. Uh, is going to have to actually sit down and watch that shit several times over to give you a solid review. Because apparently it's on the iceberg. So we're going to go ahead and get to that when we do get to that. Um... Shows these guys who cut a bull's neck. Like, they actually drag it down through ropes and they cut its neck. Uh, shows a couple of corpses and it plays like God of War music from like God of War 2. Uh, shows shark finning. You don't know what shark finning is. It's when you catch a shark, cut its fins off and throw that bastard right back in the water. Really fucked up shit. Uh, because they can't swim without their fins. Um, and they don't have the balance to actually stay stable. So you really just kill the shark right off the bat when you do that. So you might as well just kill the shark and you know, harvest everything that it has instead of just taking the fins. So you might actually have to have a cut right here. So I will catch you when I catch you. So after the shark fitting, it sticks with the theme of animal abuse. You know, these dogs are getting beaten and they're getting slammed into cages very ferociously. I mean, they are getting beaten pretty bad with this shit happening. Uh, and it shows the infamous camel stalker. Where it's a whole entire uh, slaughterhouse full of camels. And he's just stalking them and kind of looking at them. And he has his... I mean, this knife is sharp. I mean, this knife can probably cut your house in two down the fucking middle. Because he just walks up to a camel like randomly. He's a... And the entire neck is just sliced in half and just blood gushes out. And mind you, there's like 20 camels all like huddled together. Like, oh shit, who's next? And he's just like stalking them, getting up in their faces, like sniffing them. And, he's like, and just cuts his neck and he'll like back up and watch what he just did. And kind of take enjoyment in it. And then he'll creep back up and just do it again. He does it several times. Uh, so this is weird shit. Uh, but again, it's like the third or fourth uh, camel throat slicer thing. I don't know why this uh, kind of becomes a thing, but it is. Um... Then it shows a cow, right? And it's on a chain truck. And it's getting pulled. And it's a young cow. And, like, tigers are chasing it. Uh, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing really crazy. Then it shows the last clip here. And the fact that it shows this dude who has a cucumber. Yes, a guy. A cucumber fully up his ass. To the point where his butthole is bleeding. They had to rip out the cucumber. Yeah, this ain't the first, you know what's fucked up, man? This ain't the first video like this I've seen where a guy had a, a giant object stuck up their ass to the point where they were bleeding and had to get it removed uh, by a medical fucking professional. So, yeah, they removed the, uh, the entire giant cucumber from his butt or his rectum. Then after that, it shows like this movie theater shit from the movies and everybody's like, you know, talking in the movie theaters because it's the end of the movie. Shows the credits, which I actually do like the credits. You know, not like as in like, oh, I like the credits because it's finally over. But it plays uh, Scotty Doesn't Know by Lustra. Which is a song that really grew on me extremely fast. I really like this song. <sighs> and that is the end of this. Hagistros Fetais is 
done. The trilogy, mwah, finished. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sweating my ass off. I can't wait to crack a window. You don't even know. So, in my honest opinion, with all the animal abuse and all the gore, got a little bit of scat, only one scat clip. It's a moderate scat clip. I would say it's not as bad as MD Pope. But is it up there? Yes, it is. It does deserve to be one of the worst mixtapes out there. Um, of course, you know, animal abuse is a soft spot for most people. And this definitely has its fair share of that. Um, but again, if it had more scat, like three to four scat clips, and if it had five to six vomit clips, I think it would definitely be up there with MD Pope 1 when it comes to some of the worst shit I've seen. Um, but the thing is, with this one, again, the gore and, you know, obviously the camels keep getting their throat sliced. It gets repetitive at a point the further you go on. It's a lack of variety inside of this one. But what it does have is very heinous and very in your fucking face. So it is really, really bad for what it shows, but it shows it multiple times. But by the end, of, you know, you're kind of used to it. You know what I'm saying? It kind of grew a thicker layer by the end of it, and it's just not as shocking. I would say the first, you know, hour is shocking. Then the next 55 minutes, you're like, okay, I've seen this uh, several times. And the own mixtape, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so if I were to rank it, it does deserve to be all the way at the bottom of the iceberg. Uh, but, you know, I would say, again, MD Pope 1, 2, and uh, 3 would be in its own tier. Same thing with Porn Go 1 and 2, which, of course, I can't wait to review the third one. And view the other things that I have not gotten to yet. Woo! This is a hell of a journey. So what I'm going to do right here is probably cut this shit short. Go ahead and start editing this motherfucker. But make sure you go ahead and join us on my Discord, man. I hope to see y'all there. That's the end of the video. Like, feel the shit most with the comments, subscribe. I'm your boy, Cold Raven. Peace. I've been working on this shit since 12 last night. It is now about to hit 3 o'clock. Obviously, I still got to stay up for a couple more fucking hours to get this shit exported and uploaded. But I do want to say thank you to all my patrons out there, dog. We broke our 150 patrons. And the same month I broke 100, same month I broke 150. I want to see if I can aim for 200 plus before we actually end this month off. This is definitely one of my best months when it comes to Patreon. I want to say thank you to each and every single one of you that pledged and helped me push even harder than before. And with all that shit being said, we're actually going to do this one backwards because it's been a while since I've done it like this. I've only done it once. Where we go Z to A. So with all that shit being said, let's take it from the top and start with Zachary. Zach Champion. Yike. Yurt Caper, your boy Wankstain, Exodin, Rindwolf, Vittori Manuel, Varg Vickerness, Tyler Tapley, Treadmark, Tommy, Tiny, The Cup from Two Curls One Cup, The Cajun Shaka, The Bruce, The Worst Chain on YouTube, That Girl Sam, Tasumari, SZS, Sweet Boy123, Steve Garrick, Spaghetti Jelly, Spaghetti Ninja, Sir SS Jacob, Serenia Sefuentes, Sebastian Roth, Sean, Scott Scobb, Scully Pendra, Ryan Wren, Ryan, Ru Kia, Running Cloud, Roy Hernandez, Romina de la Torre, Velovic, Petro Guzzler Main, Power, Panda Man 7411, Pablito Escobar, Orlando Gonzalez, Urham Horde, Occultist Witch, No Mouth 67, which is a profile picture of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. That shit used to give me the creeps as a kid. Noah, Niskin Co., Nightborn, Nicholas Sigmund, Nicholas Pavin, Necro, Mr. Know It All, Maximus Brian, Max G1, Marluxia, Mama Susie, Magnolia Fan, Mad Dog Forever, Luke Baxter Carr, Leslie, Leon the Peon, Leo, Ladybug Panic, Chrissy, Christian, Krill Pill One, Cray Green, Kitty Vicious, Kill Coat Kid, Kieran, Kieran, Keys, Kevin Hoover, Care Bear, Kales, Kaleidoscope, K Chan Rose Red, Caden, Casey Madison, Juju, Juan, Josie Machina, Josh, Jorge Gamino, Jordan Johnson, Jonathan, John, Jesus Romero, Jesus Christ himself, Jessica Lim, Jennifer Painter, Jennifer Carr, Jake Alstad, It's Dubsy, Imi, Illusion, Hungarian Comet, Hugh Farrell, Grave Krupa, Grandma, Jesus G, Gerald Garcia, Gas Draws, Fontaine Sensei, Evan Alpo, Eric Rivera, Emmanuel Conejo, 
Easy, Doodoo Cheeks 420 Ball Sack, Donovan Van Trump, The No 360 Dick Bud, Diana, Derek Entity, Derek Dawn Flower, Dark Moon 2, Dad, nah, I ain't gonna say that, Dan Child, oh, so I'm gonna say the second part, Dead, Crazy Hungarian Motherfucker, Cold Ravens, Dad, hey, hold on, hold on, mm-mm, nope, nope, Christopher Brown, Christian Infante, Chris the Mastermind, Chippy, Cheyado, Carlos Hernandez, Cara Smith, Cam, B Wall 6, Buttermilk Biscuit, Bergshaw, Brownie Mutt, Brian, Brienne Radford, Braden Darkwin, Boofin Jankum, King of Porn, Beat Baby, Awokia, Austin Baker, Armando Rudez Jr., Arlette Ramirez, Andrew Miller, Anastasia Vargas, Alex Gaga, Alaskan Riff, Aimwin, Aimless the Most, Abby Metheny, Aaron Davila, Amen Aurora. Appreciate every single last one of y'all for supporting me on Patreon, man. Book 150 like a day or two ago. <sighs> man, I got about a cup of sweat wiping off my motherfucking forehead. I'm going to go throw my ass up in the shower once I'm finished with all of this. I do want to say a huge thank you to each and every single one of you, though. Peace. I actually go get some head. Now, peace.